what the hell is Saw Sports or whatever that last call was talking about? What the hell is that? Yeah, that it's a from Free Love, man. What's the motherfucking deal, man? Welcome to Saw Sports. I am your host, Ed Honcho. Make sure you're following Saw Sports on all the proper social medias below. But we're going to get into the five keys to watch between the Oakland Raiders and the Houston Texans. The matchup coming up this Sunday. Let's stop wasting time, man. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe button. Let's get into winning. So the fifth key, and if you know how it goes, we go from five to one from, I would say, least important, I would say least important, but from least important to most important. Anyway, let's get into a five down to one. Um, selling a sore secondary. And what I mean by that is we saw last game against the Colts, the Texans lost a lot of guys in secondary. You already had Roby out. You saw J. Joe go down. You saw Gibson go down. You saw Phillip Gaines out for the season. You just saw guys kind of dropping like flies. Yeah, freestyle king. Um... And it was unfortunate. And then the Texans go out and they pick up a player from the Raiders, which is weird that they always go and get a guy from a team that they're playing. You know, like they did last year with Demarius Thomas again, this year with Gary O'Connell. And that tells me something that, that makes me have some concerns about the length of time guys are going to be out. Uh, but apparently they said they've been after Conley for quite some time, so it is what it is. But... There's going to be a lot of moving pieces. I don't think guys who some guys who may be available to play will still be fully healthy. And this is a team that in the Raiders that you can find confidence get outside of maybe Waller. They don't really have guys that you are just fearful of in the passing game. But again, this is the Texas secondary. We've seen stranger things happen. But I think this is a game where these guys can kind of come together, get a chance to gel. Again, I don't think they've been playing their best as a unit. Maybe this can be a week that they can fix some things. And again, with the newest addition, you know, allow him time to get in and kind of find his place because he should be playing this weekend. So that's number five. Let's go get to the fourth key to watch right now. So the fourth key to watch for as we're counting down is Derek Carr or a car back in Houston. I don't know, if I'm not mistaken, Derek Carr has not played a game in Houston. Now, technically, I want to say it was at 2016. Um, they counted that as a Houston home game when we went down to Mexico. But it took the use of some green lasers and some bad officiating. You can say whatever the fuck you want to. That was a touchdown by Hopkins. To negate some plays for those guys to end up getting the win. We know it was the uh, quarterback at that time. Texas fans don't want to go back to living any of those memories. Then he was unhealthy for the playoff game. So the one lone victory that <clears throat> Bill O'Brien has in the playoffs against Connor Cook and the Raiders. That's the only time he, that he remotely claimed close. But I believe this will be his first game actually stepping foot back in Houston. And if you're a Houston fan, you know, we know, there's mixed memories of Derek Carr. Most of them, uh, not Derek Carr, David Carr. Most of them of him getting off of his back uh, after setting sack record after sack record. A lot of us were afraid that that was going to happen to Deshaun, but finally the Texans got their mind right and got him some protection. A lot of fans back then when uh, Derek Carr was drafted wanted Derek Carr to be a Texans quarterback. I think there was a lot of different things going on there. So I want to know in the comment section below if you're listening, if you were a fan, because some of you weren't Texans fans back then, did you want to bring Derek Carr, be honest, did you want to bring Derek Carr in as a Texans quarterback? I mean, of course, in hindsight, it's different. We'll see how many of you really own up to that, because there was a lot of interesting takes around that. Uh, I personally feel like David Carr got a bad rap. I mean, we've seen how good of a quarterback Deshaun Watson is, and without protection, there's not much you can do. But I think it's going to be very interesting to see how fans react because he spent a lot of time growing up in Houston, in the Houston area, while David was a quarterback for the Texans. So it's going to be interesting to see how he plays. Again, last match we saw him was um, not very good. Okay, so with that being said, let's get into the third key right now. So the third key to watch in this game, and as I said earlier about the source secondary, I think this overall defense could use a boost of confidence. Now, not to say that the Raiders don't have any weapons, but they have a limited supply of them, and the Texans should be able to contain them, and the defense as a whole needs a confidence boost. And now we know late in the indie game they started to come on, but it was, to me, in my opinion, a little bit too little too late. Uh, had a lot of penalties uh, moments of drives that they extended that shouldn't have happened. Some of those were ticky-tack. It is what it is. But still, we need to play, or they need to play more discipline to avoid those kind of situations so that you can have every possible advantage that you can in the game. You don't want to give your opponent any chances. And I'm not going to sit here and just dismiss the Raiders because we saw what happened against, again, uh, a limited Panthers team 
We saw what almost happened against the limited Jags team, so I'm not counting anybody out because we don't know what Texans team we're going to see take the field. And that concerns me. But this is a game where the defense and Romeo Cannell should be able to have a solid outing and kind of rebuild that confidence, you know, a week or so out before, you know, having a bye week uh, after next week. So I think this is... This is important for the defense to kind of find an identity, to kind of find where they are right now, especially with some of the new pieces being added, especially losing a couple of guys and finding out what they're really made of. So I think this is a game, a confidence builder, and the Texans should definitely take advantage of this, at least on the defensive side of the ball. Let's get into the second key right now. Now, the second key to watching this game, and I know I've been very Texans heavy, but Let's not discount everything that's on the Raiders' side of the ball. They do have a couple of guys that can make an impact. So you have to respect the other J.J. Now, that is if he's healthy. Rudin said he had a legitimate shoulder injury, but he's also a very legitimate running back. The guy I've been running with a passion, averaging about 5.1 yards per carry, doing it uh, very well and very efficiently. So I think he's a guy that you have to put some respect on his name. You know, he may be a young guy. The Texans' running numbers have looked better in the last few weeks but I don't I still personally don't feel like they're a better running team I think that fell because of some situations again the Atlanta game the Kansas City game where the running game was not featured by the opponent and so they were able to those numbers look a little bit skewed now that you're facing a quality running back a guy who can literally who can do some damage um, if he's not damaged that is, that is if he plays again I think it's still kind of up in the air I haven't checked the latest injury reports at the time of this recording if he's available He's definitely a threat. He's definitely a guy who can hurt this team. And so this is why I say if you can limit him and kind of tie him back into the last key that I just mentioned, um, this could be a very good game to build confidence because outside of him, maybe one or two guys or a guy that, that, that can catch passes uh, and, and Waller, uh, they don't really have a lot going on on that offensive side of the ball. So it's going to be important to watch the other J.J. in this game. Not J.J. Watt, but Josh Jacobs and maybe – JJ and JJ will meet at some point in time, uh, maybe a couple of times during this game. But let's get to the number one key to watch for this game right now. Now, yes, we're getting into the number one key. But remember, as always, when we do these videos, there's always a comment of the day uh, at the very end. So stay tuned. You might be the comment of the day if you've commented on a recent video or a previous video. Sometimes go back and catch some old comments that may have wanted to address or may be more suitable at this time. So make sure you leave a comment under this video to have a chance to be comment of the day in the next video or an upcoming video or possibly on a live stream. Make sure you tune in. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that like button and the little bell it makes sure it's filled in so you get all the notifications and make sure you're subscribed to soft sports tv if you want that rockets content that astros content that dynamo content the content for any other teams in the houston area but let's get into the number one key to this game and i think everybody can agree on this is the texans have to fucking stop playing down to competition the texans have the ability to be a high octane high powered point scoring machine but for some reason week in and week out it's like a different team hits that field. I don't know if it's game plan. I don't know if it's play calling. I don't know if it's execution. It's a combination of all these things. But ultimately, it falls on the head coach to have his team ready to play. You know, a lot of people say, oh, we can't blame O'Brien. Well, we give him credit in the wins, fine. You give him blame in the losses, fine. But execution falls upon the players, but also on the coach. Because if you don't have your players confident and prepared and disciplined, that's where execution starts to fall. That's where the issues start to happen. So, again, when you are the man, you have to take a lot of responsibility. So, O'Brien has to get these guys out here, have them ready to play, have these guys confident week in and week out. And pick a style. Pick your, your identity. And this is the issue that they, the Texans don't have a fucking identity. Pick your identity. Stick with it. It shouldn't change from week to week. Teams should know what's up. I don't know if he thinks that you're being crafty by switching up. We're going to play down to our opponent. We're going we're gonna to play to their style of football. The Texans are a versatile team, but they're not that versatile. And what they need to do is do what they do best and make the opponents have to adjust to you. Don't cater to them because then you're doing something different again. Guys are uncomfortable. There's a lack of consistency. Do what you do best. Allow your players to get comfortable in the style, knowing how they're going to come out each and every week and play the game and execute. I mean, that's that's really it. Trying to cater to this or, well, this, this is their strength, so we're going to cater to that or this is their weakness. We're gonna, man, just play – Houston, Texas football, whatever kind of football that is, I think it's a high power thing. Again, like I said, you have weapons with or without Will Fuller. You still have plenty of weapons. Um, get out there and play some football, man, and, and, and stop trying to overdo the mental aspect of the game. That's important. Yes, absolutely. But 
I think you can take a little bit of that off your plate and off the player's plate and just play the brand of football that you play best. Score points, make these guys have to adjust, get a solid lead, let the defense pin their ears back and play. But again, we play these close games. We don't put our foot on anybody's neck. It just kind of is what it is, so we'll see how it goes from there. But that is the number one key in my, uh, my opinion. Make sure you stay tuned for the comment of the day coming up right now. So before we get into the comment today, man, let me remind you to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you want the freshest flavor at H-Town Sports, especially on this channel, if you're a Texans fan, this is the number one Houston Texans channel on the YouTube, probably on the internet. Uh, and I want to say shout out because I don't know if I mentioned, but recently we hit 1 million total views over the life of this channel. To me, that's a major thing. Shout out to the Roundtable. Shout out to each and every one of you in Sauce Nation, man. We got so much more to come and we could be doing so much better. But with your support... Man, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, man. It's greatly appreciated. Make sure you follow Salt Sports on all the proper social medias, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, consider signing up for the Patreon to get special private podcasts and to join the Salt Sports Discord to chat live during the games with the roundtable, even during Astros games, Rockets games, Texans games, whatever game it may be. If you guys are Houston H-Town fans, it's kind of a more private version of the community. Everybody's welcome. It starts off at the $5 tier on Patreon. Uh, and as it goes up, you get more special privileges. But with that being said, hey, man, let's get into this comment of the day right now. So let's get into the comment of the day. And this one, today's comment of the day comes from Country Dave. It says, what are your thoughts on our slow offensive starts this season? Statistically, we're at the bottom of the league in points scored in the first quarter. Is it game planning, player motivation, or poor practice preparation? Uh, that's, that's, that's great alliteration there. Um, I think it's a little bit of everything, man. And, you know, a lot of coaches like to script their plays before they come out. So, obviously, whatever script O'Brien and, and Kelly are, are coming up with, maybe it's not effective. It's not looking good. That is something that I've noticed. And a lot of people say, oh, it's just the first quarter. But you only have a limited amount of time to play the game. So getting off to a fast start in the first quarter can put the game out of hand for the opponent. Uh, a situation, you know, you're not going to play every game like the KC situation. It, you know, it can be demoralizing if you can score points early on. Uh, when you have to play catch up, when you have to play from behind all the time, it, it takes extra effort to do so. And then your options become limited. So I think part of that is that slow starts is a part of the problem for some of these close losses that we've had. Um, is it player motivation? I don't think it's player motivation. Again, you're, 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 you're given the calls. You have to execute. Now, it can be execution more so than motivation, again. But that comes down to coaching and, and, and poor practice preparation. So I think those things go hand in hand. And being able to execute, once you're comfortable with the plays, I still feel that uh, Billy O probably has these guys doing a lot. They always talk about how complex and how complicated the Bill O'Brien offense is. And when you have to think so much, because we see a lot of mishaps between, you know, every other game you see a lot of mishaps with route running and things of that nature, miscommunication. So it makes me think that guys are out here thinking too much. And that's, that's over the course of the game, not just in the first quarter. But it, it may take a little bit to understand, well, how is the coach trying to call this game? We, we talk about uh, in one of the takes, that one of the keys that I had that, this team comes out differently each and every other time. When you're playing to your opponent's uh, strengths and weaknesses, you don't have that identity. I think that's the bigger issue is not knowing your identity, not knowing how we're going to come out this game and play. If you had an identity, if you had an understanding of this is what we do, this is how we do it, this is how we're going to execute, I think that helps with those slow starts that you see every week because you know what you're going to come out and do. Not that we're going to focus on this or we're going to try to do this or we're going to try to hog the clock this game or we're going to try to score fast this game or, you know, we're, we're going to keep, you know, it's just, it's so many things that are going on that I think this comes into consistency, coaching, preparation. I think a lot of everything that you kind of mentioned all ties into it. So shout out to Country Day for a great uh, comment of the day. I appreciate it. Hey, I am your host at Honcho. Shout out to everybody in Salt Day. Shout out to the Roundtable. Shout out to all the Texans tubers who were making original content. And again, everybody ain't knows. There's some people who talk Texans on YouTube, and there are actual Texans tubers. Uh, remember when you heard that? With that being said, I'm to produce. Y'all be cool like y'all be cool. But most of all, y'all the freshest motherfucking ingredients in the world. Y'all stay saucy, and I'm out. Perfect. Perfect.